All right, so RV air conditioner maintenance. Uh, hosed everything off to kind of clean the case out. Uh, using a coil cleaner that I've mixed up. Apparently squirting all over myself by accident. Not a good thing to do, by the way. Uh, it's pretty caustic stuff. I've actually already cleaned the front coils. Hose the stuff down onto it real good, let it soak in, rinse it off. Um, it's pretty caustic. It was it was fuming pretty good earlier, but that's all right. It means it's working. Um, you can get this at air conditioner uh, parts and supply stores, or uh, you can get it in an aerosol, like out of the major box store home, home improvement stuff. Um, I've got the case screws out of here so this is your condenser coil where all the heat comes out of this is the uh, evaporator coil that actually gets cold inside the cab and uh, my uh, I'm using a drill driver and I can't get the last set of screws so we're just going to kind of bend this back a little bit to get in there and we're going to hose this down already running a little bit so it's probably got a little bit of moisture in there which is fine and uh, there's dirt dauber nest and everything else in here so we want to clean it all up fume a little bit off the top of the coil, I do. I'm going to let it do its work, but I'm going to leave it on there too long. And just for giggles, we'll show you on the outside coil again. We'll just put another application in there, hose it down. It's supposed to be a foam up a little bit on here. i got to burn the what I got mixed up off of here. It's a concentrate that I, I buy, so I don't want to store it. So we'll just pose that out real good. And this stuff should be okay for these rubber roofs. I've already rinsed out some of it and hadn't noticed it do anything, so. And I've got two units I'm doing this maintenance on. I've already got one done. And so we want to rinse it off. More flow than pressure. And you don't want to get the angle on this, you know, too, too extreme because it's been thin. So you want to come straight in at it. And this is pretty dirty when we started. You can see it's starting to silver out. Got this nice silver color to it. Get a little more flow. And we're gonna rinse that out as much as we can and off the roof. Alright now the condenser coil is the easy part here, the outside coil, because it just pretty easily drains out. And most of the stuff is fairly spray down tolerant. It's the inside coil that's going to suck because your cold air output into the rest of your uh, into the rest of your unit into the rest of your RV right down through here. So you got to be careful where you spray. Okay, come on around over here. And you can see how dirty it is. And as I start to hose it down, it's going to clean and yellow out. I mean, it's silver out. It already is kind of yellow to start with. But now, if you see this coil sitting in a plastic tub, that's your condensate catch, your condensate pan, it'll catch all the water coming off the coil, because during normal operation it will condensate, that's why your air conditioners drip water, 
and it comes out of the pan. And I may do another application of this one. This one pretty good, but not all the way there. And if you look, you got to be really careful. There's electrical boxes down in there. You don't really want to hose down a whole lot. Also, there's a good chance right now to clean out the dirt dauber nests that are in there and let them dissolve out the mud and uh, rinse them out. Make sure you got good airflow through everything. I think it's probably pretty well rinsed for this round. Alright, so we're going to do another round to get the coil clean. And then uh, next will be the hard start kit I'm going to put on here as a modification. Helps the unit spin up quicker with lower end draw and start up. So, we're going to do this we'll be right back. Alright. Now, we're going to do a hard start kit. Now, a hard start kit is basically a compressor, or excuse me, capacitor with a way for it to switch in and out of the circuit when it needs to and the purpose for this is the kinds of motors you use in air conditioners they call split uh, I think it's split phase permanent split phase um, they have they have a uh, my son trying to tell me something. They have a need for a capacitor to engage a, a second winding uh, to get the motor started. And the larger the capacitor, the better it starts, but it, it's also still um, it's also still in the circuit running normally. And so a really large capacitor doesn't do well for running. So what a hard start kit is, is a capacitor with a ability to switch in and out when it detects that there's a startup phase it will kick in and allow the motor to spin up with higher torque pulling less amps uh, and then uh, once it's running it'll kick out of the circuit and go back to what they designed for an ideal capacitance um, these help with compressor life and again, startup amperage. Um, I like them. I have one on my house uh, unit. It's not this kind, though. I don't necessarily like this kind, but this is all that fits. Most of your large air conditioners for your house are going to be 220. These are all 110 on an RV, and they don't make many hard starts for 110. So this is the style we're using. Now it installs in parallel with the main uh, capacitor on the uh, on the unit. In the case of this air conditioner, the capacitor is in this box here on the side, and you can see the cap here. You know, a little friendly buddy down in there. Now I've turned all this off, of course, because I'm hosing it down with water and about to touch electrical wires. So, you know, water's a bad idea at this point. Uh, when the electricity is on. So we have it all off. We're going to set the hard start in here and we're going to wire it. Now, this one actually looks like it's had the, the cap replaced on it before. I'm looking. Huh. Sure enough. Probably has. I don't know. Um, if I had the time, this would be a full service, I would test this cap to make sure it's still in spec because they do wear out with time. But this is a, a quick honey-do list day on this thing and so we're just going to try to get this thing knocked out. This is a kind of a new unit for us. So, uh, so I have a self-drilling screw, sheet metal screw that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to suck this thing down in right there and it'll plug in. Now, 
these two wires. This is a what's called a dual run cap. You have, uh, in this instance, the white is common. This side goes to your fan motor, this side goes to your compressor. You just have to trace the wires out. Um, on my other unit, it was a different style cap and it actually was labeled. On this one, you got to follow the wires. <clears throat> you can see this red wire comes out, looks purplish here, but when you follow it, it's, it's red, I think. <laughs> Trying to get me to lie in here. There's a red and a pinkish one, and I want to make sure I get the right one. Yeah, there we are. It's red here, but it fades to pink once it gets outside of this. Exposed a little bit of light. So, what we're going to do... Huh. That's going to be hard, so... Before we do that... Let me take this cap out because one of the contacts I need is hard to reach. So, right. oh, that's labeled on the back side. You can see fan, common, and herm, which is hermetically sealed compressor, is what it's short for. So, we're going to take, and these are bare contacts, so better make sure you don't have any power going to this thing. It's going to be real bad news real fast. And we're going to, there we go. So, now we're going to put the main one back down in there. Oh, not magnetic. My luck. And you don't want... You don't want this stuff flopping around. It's a really good way to shorten its lifespan. Whatever you put in here, you need to make sure it is secured. Oh, that's my wrong size nut driver. Too many pieces running around. it down inside there and that's all there is to it so we'll slap this back together and uh, go test it out everything should be clean so it's wet but clean <laughs> so as long as the electrics are dry that's all we care about all right we'll come back to you okay so this is the cleaner i use New Calgon Calbrite, and it's for both evaporators and condensers. Some cleaners you get will be uh, one or another. And this is a gallon concentrate. You mix it up either one to three or one to six parts uh, with water. And I've had it for a little bit, and you can see I haven't taken that much out of that gallon. I use it at my house and for whatever else. So I've got my rig stashed here at a friend's house. It's got property to store it on. It's a uh, 36 foot brookside by Sunnybrook, whatever that means. Now, I've got my cord run out and I've got it on a set of adapters over there down to 110 out of his garage. I don't know why we're over here, let me kill my water or his water. He's on well water, so 
The spigot doesn't seal real well, so we don't need it to leak. And wife and kids are inside doing whatever. Uh, mainly the kids are, we we'll just hope they're not beating each other up. My wife's trying to get a few things done. The second unit I've already worked on is already keeping it cool. This place, there's the kids. Okay. Right. You got it off? All right, good. So this is the bunkhouse over the hitch. Bathroom, toilet behind there. Oh. Turn that down. So I had the power off. Back on and I had a little water dripping out of there, unfortunately. But is it flowing? It is in fact flowing. Now keep in mind I'm on 110. Uh, and I just kicked that off. Uh, nothing dimmed. First time I got here, oh, I've got LED conversions and everything, by the way. But uh, when we first got here today, uh, you, whenever we cranked it off on this this larger unit up here, uh, it uh, it, did, it really didn't want to crank off. It was it was struggling to get started off at 110. So let me turn it off again and uh, let the pressure equalize for a second. And we're going to see how it sounds. I've got, oh, I've got something on my lens. All right. I don't know if that's enough or not, but let's see. Cranked right up. Didn't moan or nothing. It did earlier. Unfortunately, I didn't get video of it, but it's much better. So it takes much, much more, um, much, much more amperage to get the thing running, to overcome the inertia, to get the rotor spinning inside the motor. And these hard start kits help with that. Now, this one is a capacitor and it has, it's called a a positive temperature coefficient uh, thermistor essentially so as it starts pushing current through there uh, when the thermistor will get hot and as it gets hot it increases its resistance and it will turn the electricity off going through the capacitor uh, they're better than nothing but not by much um, because on a hot day your thermistor won't ever cool back down so next time your unit goes to cycle up uh, you have to wonder whether or not the thermistor has cooled down enough to allow the, the capacitor to switch in the the better variant of these uses what's called a uh, potential relay voltage potential relay which senses voltage and when it's below a certain limit the relay will kick the capacitor in and the theory is is that once the motor starts spinning it will create a certain amount of extra electricity on the circuit the motor actually has what they call back EMF it generates an extra voltage and when that potential relay senses the extra voltage on that circuit it kicks out and those are much more reliable and that's what I have on my unit at the house uh, but there's only one model of hard start uh, that uses that and it's a specific SUPCO and that they're almost impossible to find for any reasonable amount of money for 110 units so we have what we have uh, next up is the slide out has got uh, 12 volt wiring here that's out so some of it got ripped up so I'm gonna have to get under the trailer and patch it but that's another project so hope this was helpful see somebody soon